Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 71. Thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Emma Palance is a two-time duathlon world champion and a pro triathlete for BMC Ethics team. She's coached by Michelle Dillon and has become a regular on the International Ironman 70.3 podiums, even grabbing the silver medal at the recent 70.3 World Championships in Chattanooga. Hi Emma, thanks for uh, coming on the show here today. Now can you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and uh, your sporting background growing up? Um, yeah, for sure. So um, I've always been interested in sport. Um, kind of as a little girl, I used to play everything. I um, was pretty hyperactive, so my mum threw me into like all sports. Um, and uh, yeah, it was probably only at the age of about... 10 or 11, um, that running started taking a little bit more seriously um, and slowly, yeah, kind of phased the other sports out when my my coach kind of uh, said to me, if you want to be the best at one thing, you, you, you've got to focus in on it and, and you can't do everything. Yeah, and, and why running? Um, I think just because it was the one that I felt like the freest. I felt that it was just me just me and my running shoes and and I kind of I don't know I, I felt that you could almost hurt yourself and like like you could get the most out of yourself um in in that sport so yeah I just I just enjoyed it the most yeah you come from a sporting family or uh, yeah was did they just throw you into sports because you were pretty active <laughs> yeah well it's a big debate in our our family that um so my brother's a, a ballet dancer a professional ballet dancer and he would class that as a sport he thinks it's very physical um whereas i'd say it's more of an art so um yeah i guess you'd say his i, I think mainly just because we had such a supportive mum that she would take a, anything we wanted to do she would um yeah drive there and let's have a go at it i think she was pretty glad that um i gave up playing football when uh I couldn't play on the boys' team anymore because she wasn't a fan of standing on the touchline with over-competitive dads. I think she was more into the running scene. So, yeah, that's probably where it all stemmed from. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about your progression then in, in, in running? Because, yeah, you quite made it to the uh, to the elite level there. Yeah, so um, my coach and uh, we, we had quite a strong group. Uh, I used to train down at Aldershot, um, kind of a club known for its endurance running. Um, and me and my best friend, um, we train with the boys a lot. Um, and yeah, we always joke that one day we'd write a book called Running with the Sausages because, um, yeah, we, we think that it really, uh, it really developed us and, um, probably one of the best moments of, uh, my sporting career was when, um, we went to the world juniors, um, and yeah, track and field 1500, she won, I came third. Um, and yeah, I think for sort of running development that she was a, a massive influence, um, in all of that. Um, yeah, so I, I had some highlights on the running scene. Yeah, so yeah, running with sausage is definitely a bestseller there. So you can get to put some time <laughs> into that one. Um, were, were the Olympics ever on the horizon for you there? Yeah, so actually that um, junior champs that we did served as a qualifier. So that clashed with the senior trials. So they took two of the seniors from the 1500 meter trials. Um, and then they said to us that um, if we, the conditions were to get the third spot, that if one of us meddled, um, then um, we'd be going to Beijing. Um, and obviously if both of us meddled, then it would be whoever crossed the line first. So uh yeah, Steph was one of the youngest members in the Beijing team. Um, but do you know what? If I was going to miss out to anyone, then um, yeah, it w I'm glad it was my best friend. Okay. Well, how old were you at that time? Uh, so must must have been about 18. Okay. So yeah, that was Beijing. That was 20, 20, 2012. Um, 
2008. No, 2008. Yeah, 2008. You're right. Um, so yeah, 2012 was just four years away. You would be 22 at the time. Um, why didn't you pursue that? And then how come you, you picked up a bike and, and, you know, give triathlon a go and even <laughs> further down the field, what made you add swimming and, and yeah, give triathlon a go? Yeah. So that was kind of the, um, 2012 was the, the massive, um, change in, um, in my, um, yeah, well, like you say, doing the switch, I kind of, um, I went on from 2008 having a really good year and I kind of pushed myself a bit too hard. Um, I was adding in my own extra mileage. Um, I just, I felt like I was flying and I just wanted to keep on pushing, um, ran myself into a bit of trouble, kind of won the European course um, country championships and was getting good results, but I was always running through a knee, uh, knee injury. Um, so yeah, I kind of was struggling on and off, for uh, the next couple of years, um, with this injury, um, and was being silly, didn't uh, kind of get any treatment for it until it got to the point where I, I physically kind of couldn't run through the pain, um, and end up having knee surgery. Um, and then again, I was kind of, I really, I should have known better because I was studying physiotherapy. Um, I graduated, um, did my dissertation whilst I was on crutches. Um, but yeah, rehabbed. I thought I was superwoman, rehabbed myself way too quickly. Um, and yeah, I was just constantly in pain with the knee. Um, so 2012 came around and I managed to get the, the 5k, um, time on the track and, went into the trials and I still was struggling with this knee and, and it was, yeah, in the race, it was really, really painful. And I just thought I had that moment where I just thought I don't enjoy this anymore. I can't keep on running through pain. Uh, like I don't, if it's going to be this much pain on my knee to get to the Olympics and I don't even want to go. Um, so I stepped off the track and, um, Kelly Holmes was my mentor at the time. Um, and, uh, she knew kind of, how much I've been battling this and she was like because I'd supplemented a lot of my run mileage with um a bit of biking and swimming um and just for my mental state I think she she just was like why don't you have a goal kind of a focus to your your um swimming and bike training let let the running drop for a bit um she's like I've got this um she had this charity um which had a spot at the London Triathlon um, so she was like, listen, that's in like two months time. If you kind of just focus on the swim and bike and, and do it for this race, and then you can just run on like the fitness that you have. Um, so yeah, I probably lasted about two weeks of training on my own for this triathlon. And then I thought, you know what? I want to do this properly. If, if I'm going to do this big race, um, I kind of, uh, yeah, I want to go in with some decent training. Um, so I contacted British triathlon. Um, and they put me up into the elite race. Um, and yeah, one of their coaches kind of gave me, um, some advice, set me some training, but I still thought, you know what, there, there must be more, like, this isn't very serious training. I thought there must be more to this. So, uh, I got on Google and I'd already heard about Michelle Dillon, who was like a Commonwealth runner turned to, um, Olympic triathlete. Uh, so I thought, you know what, I just give her, just bought her an email just in case I ever get any good at this and, and she might kind of be interested in my story um, and maybe one day even take me on. Um, but yeah, the email that I got back, I wasn't expecting. She was like, um, yeah, let's do this. She wanted to take me on as a pure like newbie and take me, take me through. Um, so yeah, I lined up for London Triathlon having done two weeks training with her. She gave me her bike. She gave me her wetsuit. Um, and yeah, I came sixth in the elite race. So ironically, a race that Daniela Riff won. So <laughs> it was yeah. a good company. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll be coming across her a couple of times in the, in the future. Um, so yeah, you've been with Michelle Dillon ever since. How has that partnership developed? Can you guys actually travel the world together now and then go do races? Yeah, it's awesome. I'd say that kind of like, her and Stu are, are more like parents to me. They just, they kind of, they care about me as a person as well as um, an athlete, which I think has been one of the the biggest reasons for kind of um, us having developed so quickly. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of that mentality of like, Mich Michelle's really, really strong mentally. And, and from her race days, she's, 
instilled a lot of lessons in me um, and trained in a lot of belief. Um, and I think just like they always keep it fun. They always keep it fresh. Like we always have a good time. We, we train hard when it really matters. We kind of knuckle down. Um, and then if we get a result, we kind of celebrate. And it's just a way of life. I, I've learned so much from them about living and, and kind of doing sport for the right reasons. Um, as well as, cause I went through some, some really dark times with when, when I had my knee injury and when I, like I really buried myself and, and I really isolated myself and I've kind of learned mentally from them of where, when you have challenges or of, of how to turn it into, into positive things and, and actually how to depend on your team that is, you're not letting down your team, but they're there to help you. And if you're going through a problem, not to distance yourself from them um so yeah it's been such a good relationship that just gets stronger every year yeah so, so when she took you on there uh, she obviously knew about your your background as a runner um did you really start off with a multi-year plan um bring you to where you are today and, and you're know, doing these short course races and doing duathlons and then adding triathlons and going longer and longer was so was that a like a, a multi-year plan that she developed for you Yeah, I think it's kind of, um, we've, so at the start out, we just kind of like had the goal just to be the best athlete I could be and, and just take each opportunity as it came. And, um, yeah, so we started off with a short course, um, because, um, yeah, it was, it was, I could get into the domestic races. Um, but when I tried to progress with that, it kind of, the British Federation is very much, a system of you have to buy into Loughborough or Leeds um, to to be supported and to get into the races. And it was a system that I just ended up fighting and I wasn't getting into the races um, and getting frustrated. And that kind of then dictated the path to, okay, what races can I get in? And, and long course is very much an individual kind of, you, you enter yourself, you register for what you want to do. Um, and naturally it just kind of progressed that way. Um, and then I found that that was more training for that. So I, I enjoyed it more. Um, and yeah, it's almost like we've just adapted to the environment each time. And, and when, when things have kind of, if a door's been shut, we just went knocking on another one. Um, but yeah, from the start out, Michelle was just, her main goal was to get me injury free. Um, and that involved, teaching me how to swim properly and totally changing my uh, running style. Yeah. So Rio, um, yeah, Rio 2016 was never really the goal. Yeah. I think kind of to begin with, it was, it was something that the, the Olympics kind of, they, they did appeal to me. Um, but it was just something that was a battle that, when you're battling a federation rather than focusing all your energy into a sport, um, yeah, it was an easy decision to, to make, to, to, um, go longer instead. Okay. Um, yeah, and it did, yeah, it paid off. I mean, you got two duathlon world championships, 2015, 2016, and you had a huge 2017 season. Um, if I may say so, you, you I think you grabbed a, a bronze at the world duathlons and then, yeah, the, the silver at the 70.3 world champs, um, What did you expect going into into that race? Yeah, so um, it was my first 70.3 um, world champs. And um, to be honest, I tried to kind of play down the, the expectation. I knew that I was in um, really good form, um, that we've been getting some really good training in and just the support, having that support team from, from BMC and, and having been with them for a year. I just learned so much in that year and they worked so well with Michelle and I, I felt like I just had such a strong kind of team behind me um, that I was definitely confident, but at the same time, it, it was such a strong field. I kind of, I was realistic that it was, it was my first world champs and um, yeah, I just wanted to go out there and have fun kind of just giving it everything that I could. Yeah, you no, obviously did. Um, yeah, can you sort of quickly take us through through your race day there? Yeah, so um, I'd all kind of uh, the start of the year. Um, one of the the main things that we knew I needed to work on was um, my bike. 
I kind of, um, so Laura Phillip had put seven minutes into me in Mallorca. Um, so we'd worked a lot kind of on the bike side of things and then closer to the race. Um, again, my swim starts, so I, I had kind of the fitness in the pool, but I wasn't very good at getting off quickly in the races. So I was often missing kind of pack, um, and ended up like leading packs. Um, so yeah, they, they were kind of the, the, the two focus points and, um, yeah, it paid off because on the swim, I probably had, I think one of the best swims I've, I've ever had come out with girls, um, like just behind Holly Lawrence and, um, yeah, so that was kind of, uh, good to see when I ran in transition, see a couple more bikes there than, um, maybe we would normally expect. Um, and then again, just out on the bike, we, we'd, um, driven it with, um, Ben from BMC, um, and we had kind of a, a race plan that, um, I wasn't going to burn all my matches on the hill that, that I was just going to kind of track and build my way through the bike. Um, which yeah, worked because Heather came past, I managed to, to stick with her and until we, um, caught the lead group, um, Daniela had already put so much time into us. Um, she, she just biked phen- phenomenally. Um, and, uh, Yes, yeah, so I think getting off onto the run, I kind of then had the confidence that, that this was my strength and, and um, yeah, if I didn't be silly and get too excited then, um, and pace that okay, um, did all my nutrition right, then, then I believed I could get on the podium. Um, but also kind of, uh, I never didn't believe, because in Gran Canaria, I think, again, Daniela came off the bike kind of six minutes ahead of me at the start of the year. Um, and I'd managed to run her down and, and I think you never can think that it's over and I had to have the belief just, uh, maybe looking at back, I, I did go <laughs> a little bit fast in the, the first 5k. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to give it a good go and, and, um, not give up on the chase. Yeah. How, how has that, uh, result changed, uh, changed your, your life or your, uh, yeah, your, your view of, of, of in, 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 in the triathlon community? Yeah, it's definitely kind of, um, reinforced, uh, the fact that, that we're, we're still progressing. Um, I came away, there's still kind of a lot that, that I can work on. And, um, I think it was just good feedback that the work that we had done kind of, um, had make it, made a significant change. Um, even just in, in one year compared to kind of the, the races at the start of, of the season. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a good sign to carry on doing what I'm, I'm doing. It's made me, well, it's given Michelle plenty of, uh, of, uh, ammunition to <laughs> when I doubt her or question her, um, to, to keep the, the belief. Um, because yeah, I'm very much kind of, I want to do everything now and I, I want to, do these massive sessions and and just train all day and and she's yeah she's very smart in in the way that she plans training and and um just keeps my feet on the ground and says like you can get results but you need to progress up steadily um so yeah it's it's been a really good kind of positive reinforcement of that yeah, okay so um is that uh, 2017 uh, done for you um no so i'm doing Island House Triathlon. Yep. Um, that's I think in four weeks' time, and then um, yeah, Bahrain seventy point three after that. Okay. Um, yeah. Did Did you watch uh, Kona last weekend? Yeah, for sure. I definitely did. I actually had um, so I had a ten mile race the the next day, so I stayed up till about eleven o'clock tracking it and and tracking all the BMC boys, um, and then yeah, just caught up on the the result in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty solid result by by Patrick there, and yeah, of course, uh, Lucy as well coming coming second. Um, is that an inspiration for you? And, and yeah, is is Ironman on, on the radar? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm actually going to do my my first Ironman next year. Um, I think kind of maybe middle of the year, one in Europe, um, and that's the kind of thing like I've I've always again Michelle's told me like I, you can't move up too quickly and, and focus on what we're doing and um yeah but it's just where Kona is kind of where where my real passion and, and heart lies and 
Um, I know it would take a good few years to kind of build up um, to getting a good performance there. But um, yeah, that's definitely the ultimate goal. Yeah, cool. So that's, yeah, I was going to ask my next question. Like, what's your bucket list of races? But yeah, Iron Man, Hawaii is probably up there. Maybe anything else? Um, yeah, I think, um, so 70.3 wise, I, I'd love to have a go at Lanzarote uh, sometime too. I know that's a, a hard, uh, hilly, windy course. Um, and yeah, I, I, um, I'm not going to just pick races based on my strengths, but um, I do love the hilly ones. So things like Nice as well. I kind of, um, yeah, I'm looking up all the, the tough races out there. Yeah, there's plenty, so a lot of choice. Um, yeah, you touched on, on the subject before that. You're a member of the BMC Ethics team, uh, VFIT Pro, I think, next year. Um, yeah. What are the advantages of being part of such a, such a pro team? Yeah, it's massive. Um, to be honest, like, already I, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, just uh, so sort of um, joining the team at the beginning of this year um, and I just felt like they just worked so quickly and, and dynamically with Michelle they just slotted right into into what um, we were doing and and they really believed in the goals that we had and they were just there to support and it like it's never too much when I when I asked Ben or Bob any advice any equipment like they'll always do their utmost just to provide um, anything for us that that's going to help us get the get the goals and I've learned so much from them and, and from the rest of the team and it's just such a kind of um, positive environment to be in um, and yeah I haven't really ever experienced a team like it I think for everyone to work so kind of well together for there to be no egos um, it's just yeah it's really made a massive difference to to the year for me yeah. and you're able to pick your own races or do you have like certain races that are imposed by by the team yeah no definitely i i kind of um me and michelle sit down and go through everything and then kind of present that to bob and and ask for um their advice and opinions on it and yeah we 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 edited out some races because again at the start of the, the season i wanted to race everything and then um i got got through half the season and and kind of um, yeah, learn the hard way that, that actually if you're going to race all the time that, that you can't train properly. Um, so, yeah, they, they've kind of been really good and patient with me there. And, um, yeah, it, it's totally, at the end of the day, it's totally our choice, but they, they would definitely advise. That sounds like a good partnership. Um, yeah, so you've been active uh, for quite a while now, um, running and, and duathlon, triathlon. What do you see as your your biggest achievement in your career so far, and, and what's your biggest disappointment? Yeah, I think um, probably one of my I don't know biggest. Well, I'll start with the biggest disappointment was would probably be in Abu Dhabi when um, I got into World Series race when I was racing short course. Um, again, we'd had a massive block out in Spain, and and I believed I was in such good shape and. Yeah, quite confident going into it. It was the start of the season. Um, I dived in and, yeah, my goggles came down really stupidly. I didn't just keep swimming. I stopped, put them up, and the whole pack were away. So I did the whole swim on my own, the whole bike pretty much my own, just caught some of the last scales and then, yeah, ran a little bit through the field. But that was, um, yeah, that was a bit of a tough lesson. Um, and probably the highlight, I, I'd have to say the, the world – world champs 70.3 I think just because all the hard work that we've done and and everything that everyone's put in to me this year and, and all the support I kind of feel like that was one way that that I could um yeah just say thank you and and show them that, that it was worthwhile that beats a, a world title in duathlon yeah I think so I think just because kind of um it was just that much harder for me I, I think the swim is always a challenge. I think with duathlon, um, I always line up a, bit, a little bit more confident. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely overcame quite a few. Uh, yeah, just 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 the progression that girls that had put a lot of time into me before on the swim and time into me on the bike that that I I bridged those gaps. Yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to answer this this next question because you've been you know, almost an elite uh, almost all of your life, but um, you live a different lifestyle to 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 us amateurs, and you travel the world and stuff like that. What sacrifices do you feel you have to make to 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 live the lifestyle that you do? Yeah, I definitely kind of wouldn't say it's uh, normality when your when your friends are going out raving on a Saturday night and your party is with your music on the treadmill. Um, I think um, a lot of social kind of uh, occasions, like missed a few friends' weddings and um, just things like even tying down a relationship. Um, I think, uh, again, you have to have a partner that understands the, the sacrifices. Um, and, um, yeah, it's it's not a, an easy um lifestyle but but when it's something that you're passionate about and and as long as you're surrounded by the <laughs> the people that are understanding and yeah don't hold it against you because um it can be a very selfish way of living um then um yeah I think in the end the, the sacrifices are worth it have you always been so focused uh, since since you were a kid yeah I think just always been so competitive that um yeah I even with everything like if I'm writing an athlete's program or if I'm doing a presentation or a speech or something, I I want to put a hundred percent in. Like I'm a bit of a perfectionist that um, yeah I've got a very one track mind. If if I start a job, I I have to finish it there and then to kind of the best of of my ability. Um, I'm not very good at multitasking. <laughs> okay. All right, that's, that's uh, close to the half hour mark. Um, thanks so much for your time. How can uh, people get in touch with you, Emma? Um, so I am pretty active on Twitter and Instagram or um, Team Dylan Coaching. Um, yeah, check out their website. That's kind of uh, what we do. Um, and yeah, I, I'd say that's the best ways. Okay, I'll put, uh, put those links up on the show notes page. Uh, feel free to give some uh, love to your sponsors and partners. Ah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so main shout outs are so Hocker One One, great running shoes. Um, obviously the BMC team, um, yeah, BMC Ethics. They they're just um, the big guys out there that that support me and um, Team Dylan. So yeah, the coaching team. They they say the slogan is "Be the best you can be," and and they certainly help everyone do that. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to plug? Um, no, I think that's that's good. All right, cool. One last question. You um, step outside of the house tomorrow morning and you find a lottery ticket that ends up winning uh, 10 million euro. What do you do? Um, do you know what? I, I, it sounds really lame, but um, I give it to someone who needs it because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry for what I'm doing. I've got everything I need and, and just, uh, yeah, I'm in a good place right now. Okay, very noble of you. Thanks for your time, Emma. Perfect. Cheers. Thanks a lot. All right, Jackies, thanks for listening to this uh, episode with uh, Emma Palance. Uh, as usual, if you like these little interviews and uh, don't want to miss any future episodes, just head over to iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe to the show. It's that easy. I hope you'll join me next time. Cheers. Cheers.